Hello, IFAS University. This is Lance Goyke, and today I want to give you a simple workout to ensure your new clients have success, turn those leads into lifelong customers, and make you a ton of money. First, though, we need to talk about the dilemma that we face with each new client. When customers walk into your door, they are bombarded by the unfamiliar. The walls aren't the same color as the ones at work. There's more daylight. There's some good-looking woman at the front of the desk. Where did she come from? Jerseys, t-shirts, newspaper clippings, magazine covers all line the walls and overload their senses. The only thing that gives them stability, the thing that makes them feel comfortable in their new home, is you. You have to be their Sherpa, their guide. You have to show them that this is the place they belong. This is everything they've been looking for. You care about their goals, you take care of your people, and you know what you are talking about. Now that's pretty easy to say, but how are you going to do that? How can you be sure to give them what they want? And is that more important than giving them what they need? Let's do some math. Let's say you have a client who comes in to try out your short-term three-month contract. And what if, at the end of those three months, they decide you were not the place for them and they leave? How much revenue did you bring in? Let's assume an average price of $200 a month to train for you. That's a little on the low end, but I'm trying to be conservative here. $200 a month over three months is $600. $600 is more than nothing, sure, but what if you could keep that client through the rest of the year? As a small business, it's easy for us to get caught up in chasing leads because more people in the gym means we're more successful, right? It strokes our ego. We have two underpaying members. That all sounds great, but what does that mean to your revenue and, more importantly, to your actual workload? How will you spend your time? As a rather introverted dude, I find it strenuous to go out and meet people and hustle in new clients. It takes away from my time doing the things that I enjoy more, like studying a new training topic or helping my clients become the people that they want to be. Would you rather spend your time hustling new leads or refining your business and training systems, maximizing benefits for your true fans? What if you could turn that three-month contract into a 12-month contract? Let's assume the same average price of $200 a month to train with you. Again, this is a conservative estimate, so if your rates are a little bit higher than that, do your own math so you can accurately predict your finances and accurately predict this bump in your revenue. $200 a month over 12 months is $2,400. That's $1,800 more. That's enough extra money to buy 80% of a gym aware, six rogue deadlift bars, or 120 full sets of resistance bands. All of that from one client. What would you buy with an extra $1,800? First impressions are strong. We don't forget the way people make us feel, and we're more forgiving for later mistakes if they've proven to have our interest in mind time and time again. If you give someone a strong handshake and a friendly smile when you first meet them, it's much more likely that they will feel safe in your hands. After all, those hands of yours are strong. So... What impression do you make? Now, though first impressions are strong, we update our perceptions of people as we spend more time with them. A strong handshake, then a friendly goodbye, is more impactful than just a strong handshake. Adding in a smile makes it even more memorable. Use every moment to add positive experiences. You might start with a strong handshake and a friendly goodbye, but don't stop there. Give them a fun workout, an explanation of why this workout will help them with their goals, a clear illustration of their progress, what you want to do with them in the future, and make sure they're enjoying every moment of the ride. What if you could create the ultimate 11-star experience for each of your clients? What would you do? Let's start with a zero-star experience. Maybe they show up to the gym to find it's closed and empty. No training, all of their time was wasted. What would a one-star experience look like? Maybe they show up and get in the gym, but everyone expects them to know where to go, where to find equipment, and how to do their workout. They never come back. Maybe a two-star experience has someone pointing out where to find stuff. Maybe a three-star experience has someone dull take them through their workout. They have a guide. They'll probably come back for a second session. 
Maybe not a third, though. What would a five-star experience look like? Someone super charismatic opens the door for them, walks them back to the gym, shows them around briefly, and doesn't leave their side throughout the entire session. They laugh, they sweat, they feel like they've made themselves better. And that person would give a five-star review and would sign a 12-month contract. Five out of five stars. Now, let's get crazy. What would a seven-star experience look like? You open up their car door and you roll out the red carpet for them to walk up. The door magically opens and dry ice fog pours out. You show them where they can set their stuff down safely, where their program is, walk them through the whole written thing, completely change the way they've been squatting, get them to deadlift without back pain for the first time in the last 10 years, make them sweat more than they've ever felt comfortable, make jokes, laugh, help them sign up for the next session, remember their children's names, and invite them to your next vacation in Maui. It sounds pretty cool, huh? How about a nine-star experience? The entire town is there to wish them good luck at their first workout. You're still charismatic, but now you're George Clooney instead of yourself. You sign their arm after their workout. What about an insane 11-star experience? There's a parade, a spaceship takes them to Mars, and you do the workout in the atmosphere. And they don't get sick from takeoff. They can tell all their friends about what happened, and they lose 10 pounds in one session. Now, obviously an 11-star experience is not possible. This thought experiment is helpful, however, in defining what extra things you can do to make each training session as good as possible. I can't be George Clooney, but I can remember their children's names. And I can show them exactly what they've been doing wrong, and how fixing it will get them to their goals faster while keeping them safe. I can make them laugh. I can make them feel like family. I can show them all the progress they're making. So what if I gave each client a seven-star experience instead of a five-star experience? They might stick around forever. Let's do some more math. Again, being conservative, let's say they're paying $200 a month. If a five-star experience keeps them with you for a year, then a seven-star experience might keep them around for five years, or maybe even more. That's $12,000, or five gym awares, 40 rogue deadlift bars, or 800 sets of bands. How would you like an extra $11,400 from one single client? How much simpler would that make your marketing plan? How much earning potential is not utilized because people leave? You need an entire system that fits your business and your personality. How do you deliver six, seven, or eight star experiences? How do you give your clients the best sessions they've ever had? How do you ensure that they hit their goals and make more progress than ever before? How do you keep them excited about health and fitness? How do you find your raving fans? We've already discussed those initial impressions. Look them in the eye, smile, and have a firm handshake. Those things are important, but they're simple to explain. Sometimes they're hard to do, especially when you've had a rough day, but there's not much more I can say about it. What I instead want to discuss is their first month. What are their goals, and how do you ensure that they see progress? Let's start with a time I almost really goofed up. It was with a client here in Mountain View. She has a petite body and has never lifted weights in her life. One day, a few months ago, though, she had a frightening experience that encouraged her to break outside of her cardio comfort zone and start lifting weights. A dog attacked her, and she could do nothing to get it off of her. She felt weak and helpless. She never wanted to feel that way again. When we talk about strength in textbooks, we talk about 1, 3, and 5 RMs. It's easy to get locked into singular thinking, but instead of sticking with a textbook definition, it helps to adopt the beginner's mind. Imagine what it's like to be in her situation. She doesn't know how the equipment works, she doesn't know how to do a deadlift, and she doesn't know which weights are heavy and which are fully within her abilities. How did I give her the 7-star experience? I led her. I was her guide. I educated her where she needed it. Then I pushed her when she was ready. The gym is intimidating for newbies. They don't spend 10 hours a day there like you and I do. 
I taught her how to use power blocks. I taught her how to put away the trap bar, where to find the bumper plates. If she needed two dumbbells, I would set one up and make her do the other. For weeks. It's easy to forget how resilient people can be. A seven-star experience is not about doing all the work for your clients. It's about empowering them. Make them stronger, both mentally and physically. So first she needed to learn the lay of the land. I led her through that land. Now, remember, she has no lifting experience. She hardly knows a dumbbell from a barbell. So I use some jargon words to get her familiar with it. Then I teach her big movements. Squat, push-up, deadlift, rows, single leg things, and planks. Explain it to her. These are big fundamental movements that will keep coming up over and over again. If you get good at these, you'll be great for all sorts of other movements. And they transfer really well to your daily life. I will tell her she's doing it wrong if it's true, but I'm not rude about it. I then tell her how to make it better. Then I tell her what we'll work on next time after she's perfected that portion of the movement. Always looking ahead, a good Sherpa lights the path. Now, I like how all those initial steps went, but where I failed was in tracking. My programming was not diligent enough to clearly show her progress. If she got good at one movement after a week or two, I might progress her to something else. I lucked out, though, because I just switched up her plan the week before she ended her first program. I asked her how she felt things were going, and she said she was feeling pretty good about all the movements and felt more competent in the things she was doing, but she didn't really feel any stronger. I told her that today we'd repeat the last workout she did, and I'd show her the improvements. That workout is based off a training program called Escalating Density Training. EDT, for short, was, if I'm not mistaken, created by Charles Staley over 10 years ago. I don't do it exactly the way Charles does it, and I won't pretend I'm 100% familiar with his method, but the EDT idea inspired a program for my clients. A program that I want to share with you here soon. The premise is simple. More work in less time. Set a timer and go back and forth between two opposing exercises until time runs out. Record how much work you've done and do more next time. There are nearly infinite ways to improve. Volume, load volume, intensity, rest time, rhythm, technique, and whatever else you can rationalize. So my client wants to feel stronger. Then I can tell her she's doing more weight and doing it for more reps than she's ever done before. I can explain to her how this supports her training in the future, building a wider base upon which she can add fitness. And that's exactly what I did. I sat there and I tallied each set she did. Six deadlifts, six bench presses, six deadlifts, ad nauseum. I calculated her total reps done at the same weight as last week in the same time as last week. She wasn't sure she had gotten any stronger until I showed her the numbers. And that's the beauty of it. It's hard to deny the numbers, and it's easy to fool ourselves. Even when we make huge progress, each day is just another small step in the right direction, hopefully. I don't feel any different than I did yesterday, but the numbers don't lie. Now, here's a tricky little secret. You can game the system if you feel it will help your client. Motivation is a sneaky thing. You want a person to be intrinsically motivated for long-term success, but sometimes a little extrinsic motivation is in order. Keep it up. You're doing great. That looks so much better. One more minute. Come on, let's do this. I try to leave week one entirely up to them. I'll give them time guidelines and form checks, but that's about it. And that's what I did for my petite client. But you best believe I was rushing her along in week two. I needed her to crush her week one numbers. I needed her to believe in what we were doing. And sure enough, she crushed it, doing 10 extra reps on her first exercise pairing. This workout is great for a newbie strength client like that, but it has worked even better for one of my fat loss clients. This other girl I have is so unmotivated to train. She just wants to lose weight, but she loves her noodles and bread and tofu. She drinks 20 ounces of water a day. On top of that, she sits all day at work and doesn't enjoy what she does. And she's also prone to debilitating back pain. This client has a bunch of factors in the way of her goals of weight loss. 
We start by building some healthy habits. Now she doesn't dread going to the gym anymore, so that's a huge win. But she's still not losing weight. We need to make some diet adjustments and get her work-life balance in order. She'll get there. But how in the world do I help this woman enjoy working out if she's not even losing weight? That's our only goal. My solution is to give her new goals. Show her progress she didn't even realize she wanted. I show her how much more fit she is with the same beautiful EDT workout from before. Fix technique, motivate when necessary, and meticulously track reps. Show her how much more work she's done. Point out when she doesn't feel dizzy after 30 seconds on the Airdyne bike. There's improvement. Show her that now we're using heavier dumbbells. Nice work. There is more progress. She even told me the other day that she loves coming to the gym now. She even comes in with, I swear to you, a smile on her face. She may not be losing weight, but she believes in me and believes that I'm looking out for what's best for her. Before you can make change, you need your clients to buy in. If you do everything right for them, but they can't see the changes, you will be of no use to them and they will leave. Show them the progress. Celebrate them and their hard work. Encourage them to continue. All right, I've teased this workout long enough. Do you want the exact plan I use? The plan that requires minimal equipment, minimal space, and gets your new clients practicing big movements right away? The plan that you can easily tweak to show them all kinds of progress. More strength, more endurance, more work capacity, better conditioning, whatever you think they'll care about. Members can download it below, but I want to walk you through it now. After warming them up, set them up with a deadlift and a bench press, lower body and upper body. Use a kettlebell for the deadlift if you think it'll be safer, but load up a trap bar or a barbell if you think they can do it. I usually use dumbbells for the bench press because they're more readily available in the gym I'm usually at. Pick weights that you know will be light for them. This leaves room for improvement. Give them a weight they know they can do for 10 reps and ask them to do sets of six back and forth for 10, 12, or 15 minutes. This time depends on their fitness goals. My petite strength girl started at 15 minutes. My fat loss girl started at 10 minutes. Stay focused, count reps, and tally each set. Now to let their body equilibrate again after those 15 minutes or however long you choose to go, give them a five minute break before starting the next pairing. When I'm one-on-one -on -one with a client, I use this as an opportunity to talk about life, training goals, diet, sleep, and whatever else needs to be addressed. You'll get some good transformation on these walks, and hopefully you get some vitamin D if it's sunny out. After the deadlift and the bench press, give them something single leg and another upper body movement. I like step-ups for the single leg work because it's more cardio heavy than muscle heavy, and then I like TRX row or dumbbell overhead press if I think they can do it. Just get something upper body, preferably with a rowing focus, but the dumbbell overhead press doesn't require much space, so that's why I like that one. I will usually start people off with slightly shorter set for B1 and B2 than we did in A1 and A2. If my fat loss client did 10 minutes for the A's, she'd start with 8 minutes for the B's. Again, be conservative and encourage them to rest if it looks like they need it. Remember to count reps and record them. And for the finish, I like an ab exercise to calm their body down. We might call it a kind of neurological reset here at IFAST University. Maybe I choose a plank, maybe a half-kneeling band diagonal, maybe a dead bug, bird dog, or their physical therapy exercises. This is a great time to have conversation. Ask them if they're feeling okay and how they thought the workout went. I want every client to say they feel good after their workout. And that's it. It's that simple. The hardest part, to be honest, is accurate note-taking. It works pretty well on a simple blank sheet of paper, but you have to remember to tally each set even when you're moving around to cue something on them. Shout-out time intervals when appropriate. I like to tell them when they're halfway, 5 minutes left, 1 minute left, 30 seconds left, 10 seconds left, 3, 2, 1, done. If you want a spreadsheet to print out and store their workout in, I've made one specifically for IFAST University members. I've listed the exercises we walked through today, and I've also included another day's worth of EDT for your two sessions a week clients. 
Then I've also included a template sheet where you can fill in your own exercises if you're not sure what equipment will be available in your gym or type in your own exercises you think will just work better. I just like mine because I think they cover a lot of bases and I can coach them pretty quickly, but you might like other ones and that's okay. This blank sheet works well not only for filling in online, but also printing hard copies to use at the gym. I've always found technology, and especially battery life, to be more of a burden than an asset when it comes to training in the gym. Print out this blank sheet and make up a workout on the fly. If you have a group, you can even give each one of them a sheet so they can track their own workouts, tally their own sets, and really take ownership of their progress. Make sure you look at their notes and encourage them. You can give each person their own clipboard with their last week's workout, too. You can have them do the math after class. Did their numbers fall? Maybe now is a good time to talk about stress and how it impacts our bodies. The positive possibilities with this program are seemingly endless. I hope this workout makes you at least an extra $1,800 this year. Remember, you only need to change the life of one client one more year of retention, to net nearly two grand or more. Think about how many IFAST University memberships you could gift out with just that one extra client. I'm Lance Goyke. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to download the program below. Also, what is your seven-star experience? Tell us the story in the comments below and have fun with it.